YouTube, it's Louise the Big Head Bookworm, lovely to see you, hope you are well, hope you're having a good day. So I'm here today to talk about some true crime books and podcasts and things that I have been watching recently. If you've watched any of my videos, you'll know that I love crime books, as you can see, my glorious collection of Agatha Christie's right behind me, well it's not all of them, but that's some of them, um, and I do read all different types of crime, and I really enjoy true crime as well. So I've talked about true crime in the past and talked about different ones that I have loved and that I recommend. Um, I like very detailed true crime. I mean, I like the nitty gritty. I like, you know, what people were wearing at what time and what they were drinking. I like to know who investigated the crimes and I want to know all details. I am deeply nosy and I like to have more details rather than less. I'm all for lyrical language and for um, beautiful prose however when it comes to true crime just give me the facts and but I want as many facts as you can possibly stuff in a book. I, I'm not a I'm not yearning for fancy flights of fancy I am just looking for facts, facts, facts. People, people give me the facts. I want details. So the kind of true crime that I love and will reread over and over again is something like Anne Rule. Now she is queen of facts. So it's, you get lovely chunky books and she goes into thorough details about who the police officers were and all the history of things and what they're wearing and when she met them, what they were wearing and what they drank. I mean, I like nitty gritty. I mean, really into the details. So this is probably the first one that I ever read by Anne Rule and I still think it's one of her best. It's The Stranger Beside Me. It's about how she knew Ted Bundy um, before he was known as Ted Bundy, the infamous serial killer, when he was actually probably doing nasty things so this is an enormously well-known and famous book but I still think it's a, a true crime classic for a reason because it is so eminently readable and all oh, she goes into detail so this is the kind of true crime I like and um, just as an aside if you like um, Anne Rule and you haven't read and never let her go do it it's a lovely big thick book full of information and, and all the characters you can possibly want from a true crime um, thriller. So there we go. So those are the two Anne rules that I really love. So I've also, as a, another aside, recently picked up True Crime Addict by James Renner. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping this has details. I don't know. We will see. We will see. So yeah, so what I have been fascinated in recently is the case of Kathleen Peterson. Now Kathleen Peterson was found dying slash dead at the bottom of a staircase in her own home by her husband Michael Peterson on December the 9th, 2001. So they lived in Durham, North, um, North Carolina in a very 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 big house they were well off he's a he was a well-known um fiction thriller writer she was a nortel executive um they had five grown-up children between them they had you know blended family it was second marriage for both of them they were happy successful and yet she was found 49 year old fit woman found dying dead at the bottom of a staircase by her husband at two o'clock in the morning um when the police came because i mean he phoned up 911 hysterical um when the police came they um found her dead and they were immediately suspicious as to why she died because to their mind it did not look like an accident it looked like she had been killed so there was a subsequent trial of michael peterson who swore it was an accident so that's what i've become obsessed with so last year when i was searching for something to watch i came across on um i think it was on the iplayer the bbc iplayer death on the staircase and i think it's called the staircase in other countries or death on the stairs um and it's an eight part documentary and i i found it and i started watching it knowing nothing about it and it starts with the night of kathleen's death so that's why i can say what it is so it starts there and you know within 5 10 minutes that he's obviously put on trial and I found it utterly gripping. I completely recommend it. If you're in the UK at the moment, it is still available on the BBC iPlayer um, under Storyville. If you look in the archives of Storyville, Storyville, you will find Death on the 
staircase, I think. And it's eight parts, and I have watched it more than once, and I still find it utterly gripping and captivating. Um, it is from a particular angle. And I'm not going to say which angle it is, but it is... I, I mean, I thought it was kind of presented really fairly until I started hearing and listening to other things. So earlier this year, a podcast has started called Beyond Reasonable Doubt, based on the Kathleen Peterson's um, death and the subsequent trial of Michael Peterson, because there have been um, events that have happened this year. So there's been new stuff happening about it 16 years later. So they've started investigating or they've started looking into the case of Kathleen Peterson's death. And so it's a podcast called Beyond Reasonable Doubt. We're on about episode 12 at the moment. It's like serial. It comes out once a week. Um, they're not as long episodes. They're like kind of 20, 30 minutes, but utterly brilliant. I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying that as well. And they mentioned two books. So in that podcast, they mentioned Written in Blood by Diane Fanning which I got as an audio book, so I have listened to that on audio, and they mentioned A Perfect Husband by Aphrodite Jones. So Written in Blood um, by Diane Fanning, I listened to on audio, and it is in the Anne Rule um, kind of stable of true crime writers. It's full of details. It's full of kind of histories of everybody, you know, down to where, the, where their parents lived before them. It gives you all the details. It goes into the nitty gritty. Like animal books, it tends to start with the, the crime that happens, the incident, the death. So it starts there and then it investigates things and it works its way through the trial in wonderful minute detail and um, ending up with the verdict so it is so good so gripping even though I have watched things about it and knew the result I was still utterly gripped and then I read A Perfect Husband by Aphrodite Jones who I didn't know is is from the Discovery Channel there she is Aphrodite <sighs> I would not, I would not mess with Aphrodite, I have to say. So she has, I didn't realise that she's very well known as a true crime person on the Discovery Channel, True Crime with Aphrodite Jones, and um, I'd never heard of her, and then they mentioned this book, so I ordered it in, um, couldn't get it in the UK, so I had to order it in. It came like a couple of weeks early, so I have already read it. And again, very similar to Anne Rule, really down into the nitty gritty. Um, this starts with starts with the events of that night, but very much about the relationship between Kathleen and Michael. So both Written in Blood by Diane Fanning and Aphrodite Jones, um, A Perfect Husband, both look at the crimes in nitty gritty details, but with ever so slightly different views. Um, you know very quickly in Written in Blood what Diane thinks about Michael Peterson. In this one, it does take a little bit more time for you to kind of find out what her angle is. Both of them talk about the um, documentary that's that's I've watched. Um, of course, neither of them mentioned the podcast, but they both are on the podcast. So it all links in. So it feels like you're reading kind of and talking and hearing and, and it's all linked in together and I think that's what's fueling my obsession at the moment so I really I if you're into true crime and you like the nitty-gritty stuff I completely recommend Aphrodite is a perfect husband I completely recommend uh, Written in Blood by Diane Fanning I utterly recommend utterly utterly for anybody that likes a good documentary that likes that just likes to know about something or, or kind of it's eight hours of utter enjoyment of uh, called death on the staircase as i say it's on the iplayer and at the moment if you are interested in podcasts then have a go and have a listen to beyond reasonable doubt um so those are those are my recommendations i wouldn't they're not gloriously written the books um they're not going to, I'm not sure they're going to stand the test of time. I don't think people are going to be talking about them in hushed tones in years to come. But as good kind of um, pot boilers, uh, thrillers, about just you just get absorbed into the details. If you're that kind of person, then you'll you'll enjoy them. Um, just really satisfying reads. Um, and I recommend, I recommend them. So that's, that's Kathleen Peterson's death four things come up I mean it's horrific when you think about it I mean actually when you take a step back and and I actually put because they do have some of the images of 
the death and they talk about it and you see the images and it's very very hard not to for, for me I find it very very hard not to recoil from it and to imagine being a juror in those cases and seeing it and oh I just and the, how the families must have felt both books are very good actually about talking about making you realize the impact it's had on the families and on the people that knew Kathleen and you know whatever happened there is a lot it is about a loss of somebody and it reminds us to look at the people in our life that we really you know that we're close to and and you know take care of them a little bit but anyway at the same time there is that interest isn't there so there we go. The other one that I have been, um, oh, I should be quick now. The other one that I have been interested in is the uh, Lord Lucan mystery. So I'm sure you've heard of Lord Lucan. So he was, there he is. I mean, he's just out of, they do talk about the fact he's out of movie kind of casting, isn't he, for an aristocrat in the 1970s. I mean, he really is. That's Lady Lucan. So this was, um, they're one of their engagement photos so um it's them he was known as the killer of sandra rivet in a belgravia basement which is where the kitchen was on the 7th of november in 1974 and then his subsequent disappearance and he was never seen again and it, this is an interesting book about it because it's very much the story of lord lucan it is about the events of that night and the the death of Sandy Sandra Rivet um and what happened to Lady Lucan afterwards because she was attacked on that night as well so it is about that but it is very much about Lord Lucan um and I'd never read anything I knew the kind of um I knew the story of it the kind of lurid headlines of it but it was this is a very interesting investigation into the society at the time and the aristocracy of, at that time that because it was it was felt that his friends um shielded him which i think they did shielded him and allowed him to escape or at least funded his escape now whether they did that or not i don't know but there definitely was some shielding going along um and also the fact that they took against Lady Lucan because she wasn't part of the, the gang, because she was seen as the one that had acted dishonourably by splitting up from her husband. Yeah, I know. Um, I mean, she's had an awful life since as well. She's been estranged from her children. She's got three children. She's been estranged from her children from since 1981 and has never seen them. I know, I know. And lives um, still in that area on her own and has no contact with any of them anyway there was a documentary on um itv i don't know whether it's still available to see on on the catch-up about this when it was all it's late basically lady luke and now talking about it and i mean it was stunning it was stunning how she seems to almost have forgiven him and and kind of still talks about missing him anyway it's the whole thing is is murky to say the least so this is about lord luke and it's about the society that um surrounded them and what happened now somewhere in this book there is a very good book about it this isn't it <laughs> it is fascinating in some ways but i did feel that laura fell in love with lord lucan and so was seeking to explain away how these things could happen and there was a lot of explaining him, which I didn't always agree. She also was, seems to go off at a tangent an awful lot. So there's a lot of history about the aristocracy and about kind of bloodlines. And it's like, yep, that's fascinating. But what actually happened on that night and the conspiracy theories, it can be a bit muddy. But I, I didn't mind it. I still read it. I still was interested and I still would kind of recommend it it's one of those books books if you saw cheaply or you saw in the second hand shop or something i'd say yes go for it read it but i'm not sure i'd i'd kind of go out and, and hunt for it like they did hunt for lord lucan i'm not sure i'd do that 
but yeah but it was an interesting read anyway and I'm glad I've read it um I kind of probably would dip in and read little bits again but I wouldn't read the whole book again because she does go off on these boring as hell tangents about bloodlines and what happened in the 1500s and I'm like I don't care I don't care tell me about the night I don't care Laura I found myself saying to the book so yes but I mean that picture you seem so wrong but look I mean it is wrong isn't it but look hey handsome old devil gotta give him that so there we go so those are those are the two books that I've got to show you that I have read and also written in blood by Diane Fanning um and yes I recommend the podcast and I recommend having a look on the iPlayer and yeah let me know let me know if anybody else has been listening to these things or has seen it or or is interested in it I'll be really fascinated to hear especially if you've been oh sorry if you've been listening to the podcast because you know there was a particular thing called owl theory and I I did say to somebody well what about owl theory and it, it would be really good to have more conversations about that so yeah that's really good so I hope you're well booktube and i hope if you if you like uh true crimes that i've maybe pointed you into the right direction in some way but it's been lovely to speak to you as always booktube i hope you're well and i look forward to seeing you again